So first of all we're going to start with the, the knife and just to make it a bit easier to see I'll just go into the top view. Now um, when we create primitive shapes we've got the ability to create an interactive creation tool um, where we can click so at the moment that's active so when I create a cube I have to click on the grid as it tells me to like so and then I pull it up to make the cube that I want however if we turn that off by default it's already set to off but if we turn that off then when we create a cube like clicking on the cube here or even up here polygon cube cube um, if we want we can go into the options so the little box here brings up the options and we can tell the size and so forth um, and go create and then it'll create that little cube there so let's just keep keep that one there and we're going to use this guy for for our handle and we'll start to block out the handle so just with the cube I'm just going to scale it up to to match and just to see through the cube I'm going to chuck it onto um, x-ray mode through shading x-ray and now I can see through it but I've still got uh, the polygons visible rather than just plain wireframe which you can always get by clicking the 4 key 5 brings it back to shaded mode okay so first of all um, I'm going to create just stretch out this cube by selecting the vertice, right click on the cube, go into component mode and select vertex and then marquee select by clicking and dragging selecting those two, W key if you haven't got the move tool activated already um, and then whoops, move that up to around about there where the handle starts to change so the benefit of using the um, uh, handles is we can restrain to different axes so which is rather nice and also with the scale we can also scale everything in towards each other which is also quite nice so there we go we've started with the handle now areas of uh, not concerned at this moment is down the bottom here and what we're going to do is we're going to really just block in the basic shape and then add detail to it as we go along so now that's that's done we're going to go in go back to face mode and select that end face like so whoops and I'm going to extrude out that face so let's go back to the uh, top view. Oops, I've already dropped it. So I'll go back, face mode. Um, easy way to change your navigation and so forth is pressing the space bar, holding it down, and then we've got different hot boxes by clicking in the different areas up the top and up at the top down the bottom and in the middle if we click we've got the choice of different uh, viewpoints um, so I'm going to go for the top view from there and that, that's an easy way to get there okay so now we're going to extrude out and just going to extrude it out and I'll, in a minute I'll move it across but I'll just keep everything coming out for the time being straight but I'm going to create an extrusion every time there's a you know major change in the movement or change in the shape so it starts to turn there so I'll put a uh, polygon 
lining up across there which will end up putting an edge loop going through there so we can move that around in a bit and now that I've got this tool activated um, if I press the G tool it reactivates the last tool that I've used so I'm going to press the G tool again which is going to extrude it out again so when I move it again there's additional information there so I'll do that once and I'll do it there as well and G again to the top there so there we go, we've blocked it out oh, let's change it back um, I think it's this one here, yep so that's the X-ray shortcut key same as going into there just so we can see through it again and now we'll go through and because I'm exactly on top if I go into vertice mode and marquee select I've not only got the top vertices selected but the one sitting underneath so everything's nice and even it's all very symmetrical at the moment and the beauty of this method is you can quickly sort of uh, block out the shape with only you know moving a few vertices around As you can see, there's you know going to have to put more detail through there in a minute, which we'll get to. But overall, it's looking pretty good. We've got the basic shape worked out. So let's go back to the spacebar perspective again, using that sort of shortcut. And I'm just going to hide the uh, image for a second, pressing the V. And you can see, you know, we've got a very thick uh, knife, which is not what we want. So let's go to the side view down the bottom here. And I'm going to take all these guys and scale them down a bit, like so. And then if I hold uh, Shift and Marquee Select, Oops. I was going to deselect them by holding down shift anyhow. Doesn't matter. What I wanted to do is keep the handle that size, but I want to start to make the knife blade thinner. So I'll grab all those guys, bring that right down. Looking pretty good just check it and then I'll take these guys and bring those guys down as well because that's going to be our sharp side of the knife okay so there's our basic low polygon knife and now we're going to add some more detail to it. So let's bring back the uh, template. And how we're going to add more detail is using the insert edge loop tool. So under mesh tools, insert edge loop. And how this works is, let me sort of demonstrate coming in here. So how this works is you click on an edge and if they're four-sided then you'll create a loop going around it. So you click once and you can drag that edge around and when you let go it creates the uh, loop around it. So because we started with the cube and we just extruded out every everything has got four sides at the moment. So it's one of the, the benefits of using uh, polygon modeling and um, also the box modeling sort of technique. Um, everything stays quads, you can add additional information really quickly and uh, stay
start to you know refine the detail. So we'll throw one in there and we'll probably need one in here as well just to give a bit more curvature and possibly one there as well. So that looks good. I'll just go back to our top view, use my select tool and right click go into vertice mode, grab those outer ones and move them along. So depending on you know what you need this asset for, if it was further away from the camera it wouldn't need much detail, but if it's very close to the camera um, it will need extra detail. for now. We'll come back to that in a minute. Grab that, throw it on its own layer. 